Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now, show where we get you answers for all of a stock-related query. Remember, viewers, you can connect to us live on the WhatsApp number that will be flashing on the screen. Do remember, each time you write to us, mention your name, the stock that you're looking to invest in. If you're already invested, mention the buy price, the quantity, and the time horizon. In that way, our, uh, our uh, experts will be able to help you better. But let's talk about our experts. Uh, we have Kunal Botha who's joining us on the technicals. While on uh, fundamentals, we have Sharmila Joshi who's joining us shortly. And uh, Kunal, since you're already there, let me take the first query to you. This one is coming from Kathir, who's writing to us from Bangalore. He's saying, last month, uh, you'd advise uh, SKF India when it was around uh, 7,000 rupees per share. He's saying he's holding about 100 shares at a price of 4,500 rupees per share. He's saying the stock is now down from more than 20% from the highs, lost more profits. Should he still hold on for the next one year? What's your take coming in on SKF India? What should be his move now? So his buy price is 4,500. Yes. So I think that aspect, uh, you know, I would suggest to uh, you know maybe keep a trailing stop loss now at current levels. 5,400 could be a good trailing stop loss for the stock over the near term. You know, at that 7,000 mark, the stock looked to be on a very strong footing in terms of a price volume breakout, but that did not sustain. In the next one week, the stock succumbed into some selling pressure. Now it's going through a drag for itself. The concern for SKF India on the charts now is that the indicators have come back into an uh, you know negative territory, which means that this corrective wave could probably extend for some more time. That's why I think you know keeping a stop loss over here could make a lot of sense. All right, moving on then, and uh, the next query that I have, uh, Kunal, is coming from Shashtamani from Coimbatore, and he has 500 shares of Prakash Industries. His buy price is 181 rupees, but can he expect 220 plus uh, levels in this particular counter going ahead? Well, from an immediate term, I don't expect the stock to uh, you know get back into any major breakout. In fact, over the last 10 years or so, the stock had been taking resistance at this 220 to 30 mark. And this time around also the volumes have been a lot more dismal for Prakash Industries and I think that's one of the major reasons why the stock, even if it you know, came very close to 210 11, uh, you know, levels, but uh, did not provide the breakout above this 220 to 30 mark. So I think on the back of the recent chart patterns, I would probably expect the stock to underperform since it's very close to your cost price or if it gets close to your cost price, I think you should look to exit. All right. Uh, this next query that I have is uh, coming in uh, from Mohit, who's writing to us from Ludhiana, and he has about 1,500 shares of SCI at a price of 39.4 rupees per share. He's also got 1,500 uh, free shares of S uh, SCI land and asset. He's saying that he can hold on for the next two years. Now that we have Sharmila here, good morning, Sharmila. What's your take coming in on SCI as well as SCI land assets? What should he do? Do you think it's a good bet to stay put with for at least two years? So the first uh, query is about shipping corporation, is that correct? Price for shipping corporation, 39.4 is the buy price, he has 1500 shares and he got the free shares of SCI land assets when the demerger took place. Okay, I think, uh, you know, given uh, uh, where the stock is and uh, where the valuations are, SCI is, uh, to my mind, looking uh, sort of fully priced in. So uh, since your buying prices, I think it is much lower, right? So I think you can stay put. And I think definitely uh, uh, stay put with the demos uh, entity. So I think that uh, in short, uh, it's a hold on board. And uh, Sharmila, the next query is from Bhardwaj from Coimbatore and um, at uh, this point he wants to know, can he go ahead and buy Irida at current market price? He wants to continue holding it for the next two to three years. Oh, well, uh, you know, the stock has had a stellar run. Uh, so my only caveat here would be that uh, if you buy at this price, uh, be prepared to be invested in the stock for a longish period of time. Uh, by longish, I mean a couple of years, two to three years to typically be the horizon. Also, since we are only a couple of days away from the budget, I would uh, request that you wait till next week, mid next week, let the budget be out of the way. Let whatever activity has to happen, you know, with, in stocks, uh, you do see. Uh, sometimes some volatile moves, let those be dealt, done with and then maybe around uh, Wednesday, Thursday, you could look to do the all right, this one is coming from uh, Venkatra from Vishakhapatnam. Uh, Kunal, this one is for you. He He's a great fan of yours and he's a long-term investor as well, he's saying. But he wants to know whether he can buy Bharat Bijli and Persistent now. Is What's the safe entry price? Uh, a caveat for both of them, they both are reacting to the earnings. Bharat Bijli came up with his earnings yesterday uh, during market hours. On the other hand, you have Persistent Systems that came up with the uh, earnings yesterday post-market hours. So you're seeing the reaction today. 
Do you think they've entered the safe zone that one can look at buying? Well, not uh, not immediately. I would believe uh, that these stocks have room to uh, you know correct a bit more because you know what's happened is that the weekly and the monthly charts, for example, for Bharat Bijli, that uh, you know had an RSI of almost 90 to 94 just about uh, you know two three weeks back, and from there the stock had gone through a mild correction initially, and now I think it's come back towards 4,200 levels from a recent high which was 5,700. So which means you've seen the stock correcting by almost 1,400 points on Bharat Bijli over the last, uh, you know, just two, three weeks approximately. I think that's where I would probably uh, expect that because the indicators have gone back into an over, overbought territory, you might expect these stocks to get into a sharp correction first and then a drag, which could take the stocks a bit more lower. So I think a better buying price could be maybe 10% lower, 10 to 15% lower at least from the current market price. That would be a good starting point. And if you are looking at buying on phases for both Bharat Bijli as well as uh, Persistent. All right, then uh, just to mark the movement in Paytheum, just a while back, Sherry was highlighting the numbers as well as the commentary that was seen to be on the positive side. The stock did slip after reporting a loss figure yet again, but it has seen a sharp spike from the day's lowest point and now trading in the green. Uh, that's about Paytheum, but moving on, and Kunal, let me come to you for the next query. Indra Ravindra Kumar wants to know at what price can he go ahead and buy ABB India, uh, just yesterday this counter was in focus on the back of the ABB Global Earnings. But uh, after that fall, do you believe that any safe uh, entry point uh, to go ahead and make a fresh investment? See, now what has happened is uh, over the last two weeks where ABB has corrected, it's corrected from 9,000, 9,100 levels to now 7,600 levels where it's trading right now, which means a decent correction of 14, 15%. Now, on a... Uh, you know, on a price basis, uh, you know, the stock looks attractive because of the way the stock is corrected by a last 15 odd percent. But the concern is that now the indicators have come back into a bearish territory over the last two days of the price correction. And that's why you see that the stock which was holding on to its 50 day moving average has suddenly gotten to a, a more intense pace of correction on the downside. So in, an, in this kind of a scenario, I would suggest that you should probably look to buy on uh, phases for a stock like ABB. You can start buying maybe 20-25% of your expected quantity at current levels. Keep some on to try. In case if the stock goes into a further drag or a corrective phase, look to average further on the downside. All right. Uh, this next one is uh, coming in uh, from a viewer that is... Uh uh, that one is coming from Shushir. He's writing to us on Thani. He has uh, Union Bank purchased at a level of 139.68 rupees per share. For the next one month, what sort of a target are you looking at for this particular counter? How are the charts looking for Union Bank in that shorter time frame, actually, Kunal? Well, it doesn't look attractive. Uh, it's one of the, uh, the, un the underperforming stocks from the underperforming sector so far in the last one to two months. Even uh, from the third June highs, where you know the stock made high thing around 170, 175 towards a point where the stock made all of 130, 135. It's still lingering at the lower end of the price trend, which means it's a weaker stock. If possible, then look to uh, you know shift towards a formidable limb like SBI. That's a much better bet from the PC banking lot. All right, then uh, the next query that I have, Sharmila, is coming from Harish, and um, he wants to know: Can he go ahead and buy HDFC shares uh, at this price point? Though he's already holding 1,000 shares. His average buy price is 80 rupees, but wants to know the outlook may for the next two to three years. Well, you know, I think that uh, you can add uh, uh, this stock, but obviously, since you have 1,000 shares, you can do a better place to uh, decide whether you want to increase your exposure to a single stock. Having said that, I think that, uh, as you know, uh, if the kind of numbers that HDLC Bank has been delivering, since, you know, you are an investor since 80 rupees, you've seen... Uh, you know, every quarter the kind of numbers that they have been delivering and the fact that they've now made a sort of a move where they have merged HDFC and AGFC Bank and uh, we did see that the street was divided on the opinion as to how that merger would play out and there are negatives, there will be roadblocks but you know, your buying price is very far away and I do think that uh, I'm very positive that uh, going forward this synergy and the fact that they are among the world's largest banks will uh, play out well for uh, AGFC Bank so I'm uh, a sort of a believer. Uh, so uh, I have, in fact, recommended a buy on it at lower prices. But even this price, I think, is not a bad price. For, and you are a long-term investor. You already hold the stock. So definitely, I think, hold on what, to what you have. And to buy fresh, as I said, you know, I will let you be the judge in terms of how much exposure to a single stock you want. 
All right, so that's the take coming in on that particular counter. On that note, we slip into a break on this edition of uh, Buy Now, Sell Now. When we come back, we'll continue, continue taking your query viewers. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now. And let's keep it going with all your stock-related queries. And uh, Sharmila, I'm coming to you for the next query. This one is from a viewer named uh, Krishna Raj Gopal from Mumbai. And he's holding 200 shares of Tata Alexi, but his buy price is quite higher at 9,800 rupees, though he's sitting at a loss. But what's your advice coming in on this one? Uh, should he continue to hold on, uh, maybe average or rather book out the loss and move out to some other alternative stock? So I think, you know, the uh, problem that you ha you face when you uh, sort of invest in mid-cap IT is that uh, they are uh, sort of uh, more focused on certain verticals and uh, so the business uh, takes a hit when uh, that underlying vertical uh, sees some issues or doesn't do as well as it had in uh, previous quarters. And uh, this is precisely has been the issue uh, with the stock of weight. Uh, so I would really advise him to keep his patience. I don't know about his buying price because his buying price is uh, sort of much higher. But I would expect uh, levels of around 7,200, 7,300 on the stock uh, uh, no, around say 7,500, uh, you know, if he's willing to wait for about uh, 8 to 12 months. Uh, so if that's the patience that he can keep, then I would recommend a hold. Otherwise, I think that uh, switching to some other stock uh, could be a better idea. Just be a little careful as to what price you're buying the stock at and how the underlying vertical is doing, especially if you're buying a mid-cap IP. All right, that's the view coming in on Tata Alexi. But Kunal, coming to you for the next query, and this one is on NDTV, wherein Akhil from Delhi has bought 900 shares. His buy price is 239 rupees. Uh, can he uh, hold this counter for the long term? Um, uh, what's your advice on this particular stock? Well, uh, doesn't look like an exciting chart because over the last uh, five, six months, and I think if I'm not wrong, over the last one and a half odd year, the stock has been absolutely range bound. The concern over the last 5-6 months is that the stock has been unable to sustain above the 200-day moving average except for a couple of days where there has been a you know, strong price volume up move but the stock immediately you know, succumbs on to the selling pressure and then makes a fresh swing low and that's a chart which doesn't uh, you know, generally augur confidence for uh, you know, short term as well as medium term traders. So I think in that aspect really I would suggest to exit the stock and then move on to another uh, you know, maybe a formidable space or a formidable sector on the larger cap front. All right, Kunal, once again coming to you because Nikda wants your advice on BOB where she is already holding 900 shares. Her buy price is 272 rupees a piece. Now, though, she is at a loss. Uh, what's her advice on this one? Should she continue to hold on or maybe go ahead and average uh, this particular stock? So, uh, it's a bit of a tricky uh, one because, you know, BOB uh, on a longer term basis, of course, looks very attractive. Now, you seem to have bought the, a bit of a, uh, you know, steep uh, price on the stock in the short to medium term. Now the concern for the stock on the charts is it's nearing its 200 day moving average. So ideally what happens is, uh, you know, uh, that the stock gets into a mean reversion phase, it corrects in, after a steep rally for the last two, three years for a stock like Bank of Baroda. It's possible that the stock may get into a drag, consolidate, fall below the 200 day moving average, spend some time over there. But then eventually when the tide turns for the stock, you would probably expect that the stock to stand, uh, you know, to gain a lot more positive traction, then come back towards even breaking past about the 285 to 300 mark, which is the previous resistance. So it's a matter of patience, it's a matter of time frame. If you can hold on to the stock for another, you know, say uh, 20, 30 rupees on the downside, I would believe that that's a good strategy. Maybe closer to 220 mark would be a point where you may look to even further think or contemplate of averaging out for uh, Bank of Baroda and then hold on to it from a long term play. All right, uh, Sharmila, the next query is on Zomato, wherein Rima is already holding the stock from a price of 182 rupees, and though she is at a profit, but wants to know uh, any target price to look out for in the long term, and what's your outlook on the same? Uh, so, you know, I think uh, the good news is that uh, she bought the stock at a good price, and now uh, a lot of the positives are, have sort of been played out. I think the big positive that remains to... Uh, that we can see sort of going forward is the fact that Blinkit has, uh, uh, to my mind, is a, that's the big positive, that Blinkit has sort of uh, started delivering good numbers. And uh, the only again fear again is that a lot of people are going to copy this model because at the end of the day, when you see something doing well, other people are quick to sort of get in the game. So they will have to be careful there. Having said that, I think, you know, where the stock is and where the numbers are, I think definitely stay put. Uh, my target uh, would be closer to 250. 
Right then, moving on and Kunal, the next query is on HDFC Bank where Ravi Teja has bought 4,000 shares at around 1,400 rupees. But in the short term, he wants to know what to expect out of this. See, the correction which has happened for HDFC Bank is a very severe kind of a correction. Uh, you know, it reminds uh, uh, me in terms of the chart outlook of something which happened in, uh, I think, June or July 2023, if I'm not wrong, where the stock had made a similar lifetime high for itself. That time, breaking past about 1,700 barriers, 1,759. I think was the high the stock had made. But then for weeks and for months, the stock underperformed. Uh, you know, difficult to judge that in this leg of correction, how far can the stock correct? But the concern with the stock now is that the stock could drag for at least another couple of months before it gets back into a resurrective mode. Now, whether 1600 could be a time-wise, uh, you know, support range for HDFC Bank, where the stock can hold on to, that could be a possibility. But if the market deteriorates and if there is any kind of a selling pressure, then I would believe that the base could shift lower for HDFC Bank. So it's a uh, you know, top quality stock from a large cap, longer term perspective. But then short term wise, I think the charts are a lot more dicier. So I think uh, you can just hold on to the quantity as of now. If possible, look to hedge. All right, uh, Kunal, the next query, let me take it from you because Kota uh, Sunita is holding SBI cards where she is having a loss of 100 rupees a piece. What to do in this particular counter, hold on or move out? See, uh, I, I think it's time to move out or exit the stock now. Yes, the stock had shown a lot of promise, uh, you know, many times uh, earlier, but then it's failed to uh, give any kind of a major breakout. Even recently, I think if I'm not wrong, just one week or two weeks back, the stock had come back above its 200 DMA, tried to show signs of slight increase in volume activity, but no follow through for the stock. And today it's now almost on the verge of breaking below its uh, 200 as well as the 50 day moving average. So that itself shows the sign of weakness which has been persisting for the stock. I think it makes sense to exit. All right, that's an exit uh, advice of an exit coming in on SBI cards. But the next query that I have um, is coming in from a viewer named Rohit. Um, and uh, he wants to know uh, that, uh, Sharmila, he wants to know that among Som Distilleries, Patel Engineering or HAL, would you advise to buy any of the counters today for a long term since all these counters have been under pressure? So I find the uh, three stocks have very little in common. One is Soam Distilleries, the other is uh, one Tell is HAL and the third is and the last one is HAL. 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 So honestly, you know, I think all uh, stocks are decent if you uh, want to buy for the long term. Uh, once again, my advice would be to buy next uh, next week. Uh, let the budget be out of the way. The biggest concern I for, for me would be with HAL because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the stock has had a huge run up and uh, valuations are also high. That said, you know, that is the theme that is doing well. And we need to see uh, from the budget, budget what kind of allocation defense, etc. gets. Uh, so, this is the Uh, that's the view coming in uh, from Sharmila. She was just advising on which amongst the three you, Rohit, can go ahead and buy the stock. But with this fear, it's time to slip into a very short break in this edition of Buy Now Sell Now. Don't go anywhere as we come right back. It's time to take more of your stock related queries. Welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now. Let's keep it going with your stock-related queries. And just before the break, Sharmila, we were having your um, take on Rohit's query where he wanted an advice that among Soam Distilleries, Patel, as well as HAL, uh, which is the best pick that you like at this point in time, would you like to go ahead and continue with your advice? So, you know, since they're all three from very different uh, sort of uh, sectors. One is the distillery stock, one is the infra space, and one is HAL, which is a PSQ defense. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. I think probably I'd just be cautious on HAL because of uh, the valuation. So let's see, as I said, you know, what happens in the budget in terms of defense allocation. So to my mind, all three look uh, fairly decent. And uh, as I said, you know, post-budget, uh, he can buy any of these three stocks. Uh, I think there is an upside in all Right, that's the advice coming in from Sharmila that post budget look out for these counters. But Kunal, the next query is from Saranya and uh, he wants an advice on Bodal Chemicals. Um, he's holding 200 shares, buy price is 124 rupees. Uh, though he's sitting at uh, good losses in this one, what will be your advice? See, I think Bodal Chemicals as such has been an underperforming stock from the uh, entire pack. And uh, even at current levels, the stock doesn't look attractive, the trends are very sluggish. Uh, you know, the indicators, the way the stock prices have behaved over the last 
six months, one year doesn't uh, you know uh, enthuse any kind of a major confidence. So purely on that aspect, I would suggest to exit. That's an exit on Bodil Chemicals. But uh, Kunal, one more query coming your way. This one is from Rajiv. And he has bought 500 shares of Indian Hotel back in March at a price of 585 rupees. Uh, what's the next one or three month view or target on this particular stock? See, right now what has happened is that the, the stock has gone through a three or a four week correction from 650, 660 levels to now where it's trading 570 approximately, which means a decent 10 to 15% correction the stock has already seen. Uh, in the last uh, you know few weeks, uh, now what has happened is that the stock uh, seems to have come back into an oversold nature of indicators. So with the RSI's clocking uh, almost 15, 20 odd for the stock on the hourly charts, I would believe potentially in the next uh, you know uh, one week or so, the stock may form a bottom for itself and then get into a recovery phase. So I would probably suggest to hold on to the stock as of now. And in the phase of recovery, whenever the stock moves up higher, say if it crosses back above levels of uh, 585 to 600. That could be a point where you may look to even average further. All right then, Sharmila, the next query is for on the IT space wherein Shiva is holding two of the IT majors. Firstly is TCS, buy price 4300 rupees and even Infosys, buy price at 1800 rupees. What's the medium term outlook in both of these? And if you have any targets as well to look out for, please do share. So I think, you know, more than targets, uh, you know, the way you need to look at these uh, stocks, uh, since they're both majors, is like that they will be sort of compounder stocks, which is that maybe the rate of return would be lower than uh, what you would get in a, a mid-cap space. So you sort of need to balance your portfolio to have exposure to some a good uh, mid-cap IT and continue to hold your large-cap IT. Because, you know, we did see that post uh, emphasis number, a uh, market was quite enthused by the fact that uh, their revenue was sort of more than what uh, uh, analysts were expecting. They did seem a little bit more upbeat about their guidance. And uh, the key to uh, both TCS and Infosys will be the fact that uh, what do you uh, see happening in the US uh, over a period of time, they have an election that they will have and then uh, we will see, you know, in terms of where the economy settles and what is happening with inflation, etc. Uh, so I think you need to give that time as well, uh, at least till the end of the year. Uh, so uh, the advice at this point in time would be to stay invested. I too own both the stocks and I'm not selling. Uh, so, my advice would be to hold. to hold on to both of these large cap majors. But with this, uh, um, thank you so much, Sharmila, as well as Kunal, for joining us today and helping all our viewers resolve their stock related queries. But before we go, viewers, let's get you a voice from the Bollywood this Friday, wherein actor and philanthropist Sonu Sood, in an exclusive interview with ET Now's Vikram Oja, talks about his directorial debut, Fateh. He also shares his fitness journey and how he is holding the baton of philanthropy. Let's go across and listen into him. I remember when I did my first film, so all the people who were there on the set, he said, so no one day you're going to direct and produce this. I said, no, no, that's not my cup of tea. But I think sometimes uh, destiny brings you to the place you belong. I've, I've loved directing uh, Fateh and I'll be directing my next also soon. I'm already writing that film. The pandemic changed a lot of things. Our outlook towards lifestyle. A lot of people said a lot would change. The way we do business as well. I did uh, so many shows talking about how the business of movie making is going to change because oh, cinema halls are going to shut down. OTTs are going to be the key the makers. Yeah. Where do you think we stand today? How did it change for you particularly? Because COVID was the time that we saw you that much more active yeah. on this entire building of a charity foundation. You know, I would say uh, uh, with all these different medias coming, definitely it's a, a bigger opportunity for all the technicians, actors to show the talent. Uh, the stories which you can't uh, uh, tell on those uh, cinema halls, you can tell on these OTT platforms. How have you attuned yourself to this growing interest that many actors have to the world of business? Because I see a lot of startup investments. What are you concentrating on? No, I, I've done a lot of uh, investments in all these startups. They've grown uh, to a next level also. Uh, but like I said, you know, the, the, the business DNA was always uh, there in me because my father also uh, had a showroom in Punjab, uh, Moga, a cloth showroom. So he always taught me one thing. If a, if a customer comes to buy a dupatta, and if you are able to sell him, him or her a dupatta, you are not a good businessman. You are a good businessman. If someone comes to buy a dupatta, you sell a suit with the dupatta. So then you are a good businessman. So I think that's what my school was when I was uh, a kid. And now when I uh, 
became an actor, I thought, you know, I'm not going to limit myself just in front of the camera or behind the camera. I have to explore. I, I'm a good learner. So yes, uh, when we talk about social media app, we started Explosure, which is one of the most, uh, uh, I mean, uh, an app which is uh, doing so, so well.